Lately, I've been talking a lot about this idea of combining RxJS with signals, using RxJS and observables as the top of the data flow in the application to handle data sources and events, and then at some point passing that data off to signals which will deal with representing the state in the application. There are simple reasons why this combination is desirable, the most simplified reasoning being that RxJS is great for managing events, but not so great for managing state, and signals are great for managing state, but not so great for managing events. Use them both for the areas where they are strongest and you've got a powerful combo. We've already looked at some more basic examples of these RxJS and signals implementations. Uh, in this video, I want to focus on a more extreme example to show why complex RxJS observable streams can still be useful in a signals world. We're going to look at a complex feature that has all sorts of annoying cases that need to be dealt with. The general idea is that we want to fetch data from Reddit for a supplied subreddit. Every time that subreddit changes, we want to fetch the new data from the new subreddit. We also have pagination. So every time the pagination value changes, we want to get the next page of data from the currently active subreddit. But this is complicated by the fact that since we are only interested in posts that are GIFs, not all posts, we might not initially get enough GIFs to fill an entire page. So when we execute our request, we want to check if we got enough valid GIFs back. And if we didn't, we want to keep retrying the request until we do have enough. We want to be able to handle errors in this process, and we want all of that to be reactive and declarative. So let's walk through how RxJS can help us here. We'll start with the basic version and work our way up. First, let's do a quick recap of how the general flow from RxJS to signals works with this approach. All state in the application is derived from sources which sit at the very top of the data flow in our application. This might be in a shared service, but it can also just be directly in components for local component state. These sources are RxJS observables and they tell us when something has happened in the application. If we need to load some data in the application or some user action is triggered, one of these sources will emit. We then subscribe to these sources and use the values to determine how they should change the current state as a result of whatever just happened. And this new state is then stored in a signal. Then the rest of the application uses these signals to get access to the state or to derive new state. So with that in mind, this whole process starts with this GIFs loaded source. It's quite simple right now. We just make the HTTP request to fetch the data from Reddit. This source is subscribed in the constructor, and when it emits data, that data is set on the GIFs property in the state object. Now we need to deal with the subreddit changing. We use our subreddit form control, which is stored in this service, and we treat its value changed observable as a new source, which we are calling subreddit changed. Every time the subreddit changes, our subreddit changed source emits. The GIFs loaded source takes the emissions from this subreddit change stream, and uses the subreddit value to switch map to the HTTP request that loads the data from Reddit. Whenever the subreddit changes in the form control, the old HTTP request will be canceled and a new request with the new value will be made instead. The problem we have now is that if any of the requests to Reddit fail, and they almost certainly will because the user is bound to enter in an invalid subreddit at some point, the entire stream will break. If we switch map to an observable stream, as we are doing here, and it errors, that error will be propagated to the source stream and it will be terminated. Meaning that even if we change the subreddit again after an error, we aren't going to get any more values from this stream. So we use catch error to catch any errors on this inner stream, and this allows us to supply a replacement stream when an error occurs instead of it erroring out. As our replacement stream, we supply the empty stream, which is a stream that just immediately completes. The important part is that it does not error. This means that for any request that errors, we will just receive no values rather than our entire stream breaking with an error. But that's not a very user-friendly way to handle errors, so we add this. We add a new error source that we next whenever there is an error, and this will handle setting the error in the state signal. We can then use this error state to display some kind of message to the user when an error occurs. And just quickly before we keep going, uh, if you're finding this useful at all, please feel free to drop a like or subscribe to help spread the video. Now we move on to dealing with that issue I mentioned where although we might fetch 100 posts from Reddit, maybe only three of those are valid GIFs. If we want 20 GIFs per page, a single request isn't enough, but we don't know that until after we make the request. So now we use the expand operator. 
This is one of those fancy operators you very rarely need to use, but it's also super powerful. It is going to allow us to keep recursively calling our observable to fetch the data from Reddit. We run some logic to determine if we have enough valid GIFs or not. If we have, we just return an empty stream from our expand, which will stop the recursion. If we have not, then we run the fetch again, but this time we only fetch posts after the last post received from the last request. This will keep repeating, keep launching new requests and emitting the results on the stream until either we have enough GIFs or we decide to give up. Finally, we need to deal with pagination. We only want say 20 GIFs shown initially, but we also want more GIFs to appear as we scroll using an infinite scroll mechanism. So now rather than switch mapping directly to the request, we switch map to our pagination source, which then can cat maps to the request to load data from Reddit. If the user triggers a new page twice, we don't want to just ignore and cancel that first request. Each time we call next on the pagination source, it will trigger the HTTP request again. And each time we are keeping track of what the currently last known GIF is, and we fetch after that. Notice that we use start with as well on this stream. That is because we want the first page to be fetched automatically straight away. We don't want to have to manually call next on the pagination source or trigger some kind of load action to get things going. By switch mapping to pagination and then concat mapping to the HTTP request, this means that we can next the pagination source manually whenever we want to fetch a new page of data, but the fetch will also be triggered automatically whenever our subreddit change source emits and it will use whatever the new subreddit value is when making the request to fetch that first page of data. It's also important to note here that in the reducer for the subreddit change source, we handle clearing the existing GIFs from the state, as well as clearing the last known GIF that was fetched and setting the loading state to true. So we have all of these rather complex requirements, dynamic recursive fetching, error handling, paginating, reacting to search changes, all represented declaratively in a few sources that utilize a few key RxJS operators. But then we have this little imperative bridge between RxJS land and signal land in this reducer step that removes a lot of the complexity of coding reactively with RxJS. It allows us to still sneak in a bit of imperative cheating when it makes sense in this one well-defined place, like the way we are dealing with the last known GIF and clearing GIFs. And there isn't much of a penalty for this cheating because although we technically have an imperative step here and are losing some level of declarativeness, we are immediately putting our data back into a reactive and declarative paradigm by setting it into our state signals. All right, thank you for watching. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Uh, like or subscribe if you feel like it, and I hope to see you again next time.